What I spoke about is the following. Uh, a number of years ago, we found out that uh, the wind pathway drives colon cancers. It also drives the stem cells of the intestinal tract, but the identity of those stem cells was unknown for a long time. And by combining those two observations, wind drives cancer, but wind drives healthy stem cells as well, we came up with a novel marker, LGR5, which is now widely used as a stem cell marker. And LGR5 helped us to find the colon stem cell, but also stem cell of many other tissues. So that was the starting point. Um, we then realized that LGR5 is a receptor for a very potent growth factor called R-spondin. Um, and we designed cultures where we can take, we think, any type of stem cell from an adult mouse or human, um, culture it in a small cocktail of growth factors, the most important being R-spondin, and then have these single stem cells grow out for as long as we want. Organoids are the small versions of organs that we, gr that we grow from, from these stem cells. So colon organoids, we call them mini guts, grow from a single stem cell taken from a colon. If you take a stem cell from the stomach, you'll grow a stomach organoid. And, and the, the cells are quite dumb. They will make the tissue where they come from, but they will never make anything else. Also important is that they only make the epithelium. They do not make the blood vessels or the immune cells, just the epithelium. Now in cancer, it is the epithelium that's actually the malignant tissue. And a tumoroid would be uh, an organoid not grown from a normal stem cell, but grown from a cell that comes out of a tumor. And therefore it represents the tumor, but then in, in a plastic dish. We've probably held the original ones in culture for three to four years. So it looks like they grow uh, indefinitely. Also when they are normal tissue, People would have predicted that they would probably have to become cancer cells to grow for long times outside the body. That's not what we find. We find that their genome stays entirely normal. Telomeres stay long. People worry about short telomeres because that has to do with aging. Um, we see no mutations. We see no structural changes to the chromosomes. So it really looks like this is an indefinite culture of normal or malignant cells. Well, we've done a lot. We, for instance, have shown that you can treat mice with cultured stem cells. Uh, we've done that for colon and treated mice with colitis. We've done it for uh, mice with liver diseases, where we treat the mice with liver stem cells or liver mini gut, mini organs. Um, that's one thing, so regenerative medicine. We've even shown that you can take stem cells from a patient with cystic fibrosis, a little kid, grow them as a mini gut, in the mini gut repair the gene defect, exactly, so, so there are three bases missing in this particular patient, put the three DNA bases back in the right gene, and then grow a mini gut out of, the, out of that stem cell. Um, and the, the, the promise is that we would ultimately be able to give these cells back to a patient, but that has to be, go through a lot of regulatory hurdles. That would be one, and I think a third one that's of most interest to the people here is that we can grow mini guts from or mini cancers from all of these different cancers that we talk about at the meeting um, and we can actually treat them in plastic with a variety of drugs and this could maybe have predictive value of what patient to treat with what drug or maybe if you do trials stratify the trials say okay these patients should go in arm a and these patients go arm b because they behave differently in in these organized cultures so there's one important thing we've actually we have thought very hard about how to make this technology, but also the tissues that we grow available to the academic and the industrial community. Uh, there's a lot of ethics involved that are very complicated because we sequence patients and their tumors. People know how to solve that. But we also grow patients' tissue and their tumors. Uh, and we don't want to recreate the problem that has existed with HeLa cells, where the original patient never had consented that these cells were used and they were spread around the world. So we had to think very hard about protocols where we could actually, where we know exactly who has the cells at any time uh, of the day, uh, and that if a patient or a family of a patient wants the cells destroyed for whatever reason, that we actually can force the people who are working with those cells to destroy the cells. So the take-home message is that it actually it is possible uh, uh, against belief that one can culture normal cells, normal stem cells, and malignant stem cells. And it's probably fast enough to 
to build this in the clinical practice that we are now developing for colon for, for cancer patients.